Hi, Paul here from Easy Composites with the second tutorial in our series where we're making the lightest and most indestructible sledges we can for a North Pole record attempt called the Dark Ice Project. In this video, we'll be taking the pattern that we made in our previous tutorial and using it to produce this production ready mold. If you want a bit more background information on this project, we've got a separate introduction video where we speak to the expedition coordinator, Alex Hibbert, in detail about the expedition itself and exactly what he needs from these sledges. If you've already watched our previous tutorial where we made this pattern, you'll know that this has been coated in the Easy Composites Pattern Coat Primer and High Gloss. Now these are dedicated pattern coating systems and we know that they'll provide a very reliable release from the mold making systems that we'll use later. However, if your pattern has been coated with a paint, whether that's a rattle cam paint or a two pack paint, please, please test a small area first to ensure that you get a good release. We have far too many customers calling us with their molds stuck to the patterns. Nine times out of 10, that's because they've used an unsuitable paint system. There are, of course, many different materials that you can make a mold from. And in our back catalogue of videos, you'll see many of these being put to use. But for a relatively large room temperature use mold like this, the Unimold system is absolutely perfect. It's very low shrink, so we retain the dimensional accuracy of the pattern. It's very fast to work with and cost effective. And also it features a vinyl ester gel coat, which is suitable for direct contact with epoxy resin. In this video, I'll be coating this pattern in release agent and then setting up the flanges and barriers. After that, we go on to making the mold itself. So that involves a Unimold tooling gel coat brushed onto the surface. This is then followed with the Unimold coupling coat, which is laminated with a lightweight chop strand mat. And then the main mold reinforcement follows, which is the Unimold tooling resin and heavier weight 450 gram chop strand mat laminated in strips down the mold. So let's get started. The first and probably most important step to making a mold is to ensure that you get a good release from your pattern or from your original part. For that, we'll be using the Easy Lease chemical release agent system, which over the years has proven itself to be incredibly reliable. The first stage in that is to use a mold cleaner and that removes any contamination, greases or oils from the surface of the part. And then that is followed up with the correct application of the Easy Lease chemical release agent itself. On a fresh pattern, the Easy Lease needs to be applied in at least six coats, leaving at least 15 minutes between each. It should be applied at normal room temperature, so around 20 degrees Celsius. The normal application method is to wipe a thin film systematically over the entire surface. If any pooling or beading is noticed, this should be leveled out with a clean dry cloth. It's important to use lint-free solvent application wipes here, as normal tissue papers can be attacked by the solvent and leave smearing. It's also important to use a fresh piece of cloth for each coat so that you don't contaminate the release agent with partly cured material from the previous cloth. With the release agent applied and cured, we're now ready to consider the flanges. Because this mold is going to be used for resin infusion, we need fairly large flanges which will give us ample room to set up the resin infusion consumables and feed lines. Because this pattern has a flat base, setting up the flanges is actually very simple. All we need to do is set it down onto a flat board. So here we have a sheet of OSB with some polypropylene plastic on top of it. Now the polypropylene plastic is particularly well suited because it doesn't require any release agent. If you do have a pattern that requires more complicated flanges, you might find our videos on the bonnet making and airbox tutorials very interesting as they address much more complicated flange systems. With the pattern set onto the flange, we now need to seal the two together. If we weren't to do that, the gel coat could run underneath the pattern there and that would create a mechanical lock. So to seal it up, it's very simple. Just take some filleting wax, feed it around the perimeter of the pattern there, and then using a filleting tool, we can sweep around and that leaves us with a very nice consistent radius between the flange and the pattern. We're also going to continue on and do the same thing with the upturn around the edge of the flange here. If you don't have filleting wax to hand, then ordinary modeling clay like plasticine can be used for this job. However, making a neat job of it is much more time consuming. The easiest way to remove any wax residue from around the fillet is to rub another piece of wax over it, which will quickly and cleanly lift it away. For this large gap at the rear of the pattern, I'm changing over onto the larger filleting ball and using this to create a bigger radius, which will bridge the gap. With the pattern now prepared with all of its flanges, ready to go onto the mold making itself. 
The materials we'll be using are the Unimold mold making system, and that's particularly well suited to a project like this because it's both fast and cost effective, and the resulting mold is compatible with a variety of processes, ranging from a polyester hand layup right through to an epoxy infusion. So let's go back to the booth and get started. The Unimold tooling gel coat is vinyl ester based, so it needs catalyzing with MEKP at 2%. Now, as this gel is quite low reactivity, if you're working in a cooler environment, 3% MEKP might be preferred to ensure that the gel cures in a reasonable time. Here I'm using a catalyst dispenser bottle to make the dosing easier. With the catalyst added, the gel coat needs to be thoroughly mixed, ensuring to scrape the sides and the bottom of the container. The gel coat can then be brushed onto the pattern. This is a liberal application and you will probably find that it will naturally coat evenly at about 4 to 500 grams per square meter. The brushing method is probably better described as spreading rather than painting and you're looking for an even coverage without any drips or runs. Special care should be taken in the corners and at the bottom of vertical surfaces to ensure that there is not excessive pooling. The Unimold tooling gel coat does not exclusively need to be used with the rest of the Unimold system and is compatible with all conventional polyester and vinyl ester resins and as such is commonly used as a durable tooling surface for more traditional GRP mold making methods using polyester laminating resins for the reinforcement. After coating this can be left to cure which is typically around 4 to 6 hours at room temperature. It is very important that the gel coat is properly cured before continuing with the second coat of coupling coat. If you continue too soon, the second gel coat will be attacked by the solvents in the next layer which will wrinkle and ruin the surface. When it's properly cured, it will feel completely solid with a very slight tack. If you're in any doubt, leave it longer. Good adhesion to the following layers will still be achieved even days later. The particular mat that I'm cutting here is a very lightweight 100 gram mat. This is only used for the coupling coat where we will laminate two plies. The 100 gram mat is ideal for these very first layers as it follows the contours and details of the mould very easily. When cutting the reinforcement, you will find that the cutting kit of materials into panels that neatly fit the shapes and contours of the mould will make the layout much easier. The matting will cut easily with scissors or a knife. Where you have overlaps in the reinforcement, it's generally best to tear the matting so that you get a feathered edge, which will make for a smoother and more level transition into the next piece. Just like the gel coat, the coupling coat is a vinyl ester resin system and therefore it needs catalyzing with MEKP and mixing in just the same way. The coupling coat can then be brushed onto the gel coat and the chop strand mat laid onto this. Whenever you're hand laminating, it's always best practice to get a rich layer of resin under the reinforcement rather than trying to wet the material out from the back, as this reduces the likelihood of air entrapment. With the chop mat laid down, it can then be stippled into the resin. At this point, the emulsion binder that holds the chop strands together will begin to dissolve in the resin and it will become much more pliable and be able to follow intricate contours. Once the binder in the matting has broken down, brush strokes on the surface should be avoided, as these will easily drag the now loose fibres around the surface. Instead, a stippling action should be used to consolidate the laminate. Unless you're working on a very small mould, a laminating roller will also make the consolidation easier and more even. Identifying when the matting is fully wetted out is very easy as it will look almost completely transparent and any air bubbles or pockets will have been removed. The purpose of this coupling coat is to put a layer of reinforcement without any voids onto the gel coat. Unlike the tooling resin that will follow later, the coupling coat resin is transparent and so identifying and eliminating small air pockets and voids is much easier. If then, in the following main tooling resin reinforcement, there are small voids, these will be behind this coupling layer and therefore the gel coat will still be supported. With the coupling coat now cured to a tacky state, we're ready to go on with the mold's main reinforcement, which is four plies of 450 gram chop strand mat with the Unimold tooling resin. It's really important to do all four plies simultaneously. This ensures that you get sufficient exotherm to fully cure the resin. Just prior to laminating, you should go over your mold and inspect it for any areas where you might have high fibers like this, because if you were to laminate straight over the top of this, it's likely to cause an air pocket underneath. So we're just going to rub these back with a bit of 120 grit paper.
The Unimold tooling resin is loaded with special fillers that mean unlike conventional polyester resin systems, it has almost no shrink and remains very dimensionally accurate. But these fillers do settle in the resin, so it's essential to fully mix the resin before use to re-blend them. The resin again needs catalyzing and mixing in just the same way as the previous gel and coupling coat, but note that this is catalyzed at a lower ratio of around 1%. The tooling resin is used in conjunction with four layers of a heavier weight 450 gram chop strand mat, which has been pre-cut into a kit in just the same way as the reinforcement for the coupling coat was. It's important to do all four layers in one lamination, as the specialist non-shrink fillers need the heat from the exothermic reaction to work. If you were to do less layers, the heat buildup would not be sufficient for them to work properly. Likewise, if you go much thicker with the laminate, you would run the risk of the layout getting too hot during cure, which would lead to a pre-release and potentially distortion. So, laminating with essentially the same method as the coupling coat, the four layers are built over a manageable area. For a single laminator, working alone, the largest mould that should be attempted in one layup would normally be around one square metre. If the part is larger, this staggered layup method using multiple batches of resin and laminating around three quarters of a square metre at a time will be needed. Using this technique, a mould of almost any size can be tackled, and you will see on this mould the first areas that were laminated are curing as I'm laying up a new strip two batches further down. We do use the Unimold tooling system in a number of our videos, so if you want to pick up even more tips on working with this system, it's definitely worth taking a look through our back catalogue. After the laminating is complete, the mould can be left to cure. When this happens, the resin will generate heat through an exothermic reaction, and you will notice it cures to a lighter colour. After 24 hours at room temperature, it will be ready to remove from the pattern. With the mould now cured, the plastic flange barriers can be removed and the edges trimmed back. Here I'm using an angle grinder with a 1mm slitting disc, which will make light work of the job. We're now back in the workshop and we're ready to strip the pattern out of the mould. So the first thing to do is remove the backing board. I'm now going to work my way around the perimeter of the pattern, just prying it away from the mould, which should make the release a bit easier later on. When you apply the wedge in, you can hear the release progressing over quite a few seconds. And so if you just hold the wedge there, that will allow that release to spread further, which should again make it easier to pop out when we do go for it. After removing the pattern, there is a slight haze left on the surface of the mould from the release agent. This almost instantly polishes out using NW1 polishing compound and a rotary polisher, leaving a mirror-like finish on the mould. After a final polish, this mould is now ready to be put into service. Now, we'll be using this for an advanced epoxy infusion, but because of the high dimensional accuracy, and low cost nature of the Unimold system, it is often the best choice for a variety of processes, ranging right down to a standard fiberglass and polyester resin hand layup. For a full list of compatibilities, visit the product page on the Easy Composites website. So that concludes the mold making section of this project. In the next video in the series, we're not going to be going straight onto the infusion, but first, we're going to be doing some materials testing to establish the very best materials that we can make these sledges from. If you want to stay up to date with new videos as we release them, please hit the subscribe button and a big thank you to all of our customers. If you do want any more information on the materials or the processes used throughout this project, please visit the project page on the Easy Composites website.